an eternal ant vivarium. Is it possible? Come along when we from scratch build, document and inhabit an amazing ant vivarium on the channel of Nordic Ants today. Hi guys, today I'm going to present to you one of my absolute favorite ant setups, the natural ant vivarium. I'm going to, in this video, show you guys every step in creating what I think is by far the most beautiful formicarium you could possibly build. As always, have a fantastic day and without any delay, let's get to it. Starting with the few materials you actually need to buy. You will need some clean gravel substrate. Small rocks or something called hydrograins will do it. Second, you will need a nice transparent container, available in most stores. Finally, some sort of substrate divider. I will explain its function later in the video, so stay tuned. But before venturing out to harvest the forest's hidden treasures, we need a backpack to contain our catches. I used to bring a small container to put the most fragile plants in. Then, for the more robust plants and other sticks or rocks, I simply have a bag of some sort. And at last, a big bag to be able to carry everything. Optionally, you could bring a spoon of some sort to use as a tool when procuring the plants, but I prefer to use my hands to easier feel the roots. Time for action! This may be my favorite part, seeking and venturing into the nearby forest. This part is pretty simple, catch and take what inspires you, but care. Try to be as discreet as possible and don't cause too much harm. Take what you need. Starting off with the plants, try to get as much of the roots as possible. It will increase their chance of survival later drastically. Second, procure yourself of different mosses. Mosses are super, they cover a lot and keeps the humidity very effectively. But when taking moss, pay attention. Small red ants, as seen here, also called Myrmica rubra, has their nests in moss. So, if you happen to see any, try elsewhere. These ants are very cute, but don't get carried away. They are notorious predators with a painful sting. Look at this little worker that has slain a helpless larva. Oh, here's a live one. Oh no. Watch out! Phew! Close one. Carry on, larva. After you have finished collecting all green stuff, it is time to gather more permanent structures, as good looking stones or sticks, even bark. Now, I also want to remind you to have a closer look in the forest. Don't get too close, though, especially the ants. Our goal in this setup is actually to observe the ants in their natural habitat, so why not take a peek now? I, for example, have wood ants dwelling in my neighboring forest. They have such an impact on it. They are everywhere. So much that they can actually create natural highways like such. And if you follow them, you will always end up by a big ant mound. As said, all roads leads to Rome. As you can see, our collection is pretty good. We have a lot of different plants and mosses, which is good. It gives the setup more diversity and possibilities for its inhabitants. We also have a nice looking stick and stone. Now 
now we start creating. It all starts by us pouring the whatever substrate we have chosen, I chose uh, aquarium gravel, into the container like the. After another try we got it right and we now even it out. Then we cut a fitting piece of the substrate divider we brought with us. And now we put it in the container so that it covers all the false bottom. Now it is time for us to add the dirt and then you even it out so you can create your own landscape. I also decided to add sand for the ants to dig into so they can choose between two substrates to make their nest in. Now it is time for us to place the permanent structures that we brought with us. You want them to fit nicely into the dirt so that they don't fall. Nicely fitted, you now add the plants. I'm so sorry, it, it didn't record when I added most of the plants. So now you will see me add the, the rest of the plants to finish the vivarium. I don't know why it didn't record, but yeah, we will just be happy with it. Final touches and voila! When you feel uh, finished, you spray the whole formicarium to moisten up all the plants and other living stuff in it. And you can make some final adjustments. Then you can also clean the, the vivarium glass uh, with the extra water and uh, you will have a great view in it. So now I will explain to you guys why we need the substrate divider and the false bottom. So first I want you to uh, put water so that it fills the whole entire false bottom, like this. So the false bottom uh, has its function as a gathering of water in the bottom of the vivarium, since everything that every, every drop of water will end up in the bottom of the vivarium, and if there is uh, dirt there, it will create a sort of not enjoyable mud that will eventually kill the plants. But this gathering of water actually evaporates and eventually condensates on the top of the uh, vivarium and as the drops get bigger, it actually precipitates down as rain on the plants and the drops of water will eventually end up in the gathering of water again and it creates a sort of water cycle within the vivarium. So now we are practically done but uh, the plants will need to grow in and fit in the vivarium but to do so they actually need some help from certain garbage cleaners as insects. The first habitant and probably the most important is the isopod. They are very hard to catch and very rare. You can't just open some sort of box and think you will find thousands of them. Okay, I was just uh, messing around. Well, let's get some. First insects cough. You need to put some leaves or something into the catching container for them to be able to hide from each other. Now we want to look in the dirt. What? Wait, did you see that? The small white thing? Yes, that is a springtail. We want them because they are super good decomposers. The best place to find good decomposers are in the dirt. So. Get some dirt in a healthy, natural place and put it in your jar. Now that we have gathered the essential, we can get some cooler insects or inhabitants. So, like this beetle, can you see it standing on the tube? Yes, I will try to catch it. Oh, oh wait, don't escape. Oh, okay, I got it. Oh, there's another one. And then you put it in the container. And you can do so with the other insects, whatever you want to catch, and then we get back. 
back inside, you put your whatever you have gathered in a more observable container and you inspect your new inhabitants uh, very carefully so that you don't have any undesired new inhabitants and when you're done you can introduce them to your vivarium Hop, and there you go. You leave all the leaves or other debris in the vivarium. Uh, the same when you cut and trim your leaves, because you don't want to take anything from your ecosystem, you want to leave it in there. And now your insects can explore their new home. I have actually chosen to introduce another ant species in there too. This is not the main ant species I will have in there, but this is a small Temnothorax queen that I caught two months ago and she has her first worker and they're actually called, a called acorn ants and they're very discreet, that's why I chose to put them in there and they're actually so small that they live in acorns. So now and we remove the cotton and they're ready to be introduced. Now, if you feel the need to add another plant, you can do so. Uh, be careful, disturb, don't disturb too much, and use a pincher or something delicate to eventually plant your plant like this. And we are done. This is a lovely setup, and it's possible to build everywhere in the world. Uh, you only need your imagination, and nature will do the rest for you. But wait! What? I have forgot my ants! Oh, we'll take that in the next video. Stay tuned and subscribe because in the next update video I will add my three queen Formica colony. <laughs>